Okay, today we're going to look at confined spaces and predominantly the rescue from these spaces. People often wonder what I can do. It all gets a bit foggy. And is what can I do legally? What can I do morally and ethically? Because my mate's in there, possibly only 10 feet from me and I can't go in to get him. What can I do technically? And that's one of our problems. It's not easy to leave a colleague sat in a space, especially when you can see them and not be able to help them. We have an old saying, I'm sure you've heard it, uh, you fail to prepare and you prepare to fail. And that's exactly what people do. Now is not the right time to start thinking about rescue. It needs to be done earlier. So let's go along and see what we can do and prepare you to, to get into these spaces. Okay, it looks like at the uh, high risk environment. The lads that are going in to the high risk environment will have one of these on, a full self-contained breathing apparatus. And I'd like to think that outside the space, there's a team of three which acts as an emergency rescue team, also kitted out with full uh, SCBA. This has sorted our problem out basically because they're on site. It may be a fire team that's on site that's readily available, but what happens is if you get an incident in the space, they're there immediately and that's okay. Okay, we're now gonna look at medium risk spaces and some low risk spaces. And these are the spaces that give people the most problems because they're not sure of what to do. We're gonna break this down now into two little scenarios. The first one is where a gas alarm starts to sound. Gas, gas, gas! Hopefully, everybody in the space will be aware now there's a gas alarm going off. They'll don their escape breathing apparatus sets and they'll all make their way safely and slowly to the exit spot. The problem arises now where somebody in the space has been overcome by the gas and we've had to leave them in the space. This is when it becomes morally and ethically a problem because my mate's now in there, do I go in for him, do I not go in for him? What can I and what can I not do? Okay, so effectively now we've got a casualty stuck in the space in a non-breathable atmosphere. If you cast your mind to when you go on holiday and the safety brief on the aircraft is put your own oxygen mask on first before you assist others. So everybody needs to don their escape set straight away. At that point, you can assist your casualty or your colleague and put his or her face mask on so he can breathe or she can breathe. This is a PP10, a Draeger PP10, which means we have 10 minutes of air. Sometimes we can get these with 15 minutes of air. And if we are sat down, breathing very gently and taking our time and not stressing, we can get a lot longer than 10 or 15 minutes. We can actually get 20, 25 minutes of air sat down. That will give the rescue teams ample time to come and save you. The other thing with this is, the top man plays a very important role because on there it says, emergency escape breathing apparatus. So under no circumstances must the top man or the top person let anybody into the space to complete a rescue. Taking one of these in, thinking they're doing the best. It's a big no-no, we can't go in, we have to wait for a rescue team. Okay, let's look at scenario two. Something like this may occur. Oh! Is everybody okay? Oh, uh, Charlie's gone down. I think he's broke his ankle. Okay, help's on its way. In this position, now, the gas alarm hasn't gone off and the space and the characteristics of this space haven't changed. It's the same atmosphere in the space as it was when the initial team went in. So now, we could send two or three more people in as long as they've got a fully charged escape breathing apparatus set, a gas monitor, harness, helmet. They can actually go in to assist the casualty. There's no difference between a team going in to repair a valve as there is a team going in to rescue a casualty. If, while they're in the space, the gas alarm sounds, then obviously we revert back to scenario one where everybody dons the mask and comes out the best they can. Okay, here at REAX, we can offer you a one-day rescue skills awareness course to assist you with your decisions in problems like this. We also offer a rescue skills course, which is a two-day course, slightly more involved, which goes into the movement of casualties and use of stretches. The staff that we've got here, our instructional staff, uh, have been in the fire service a long, long time, and many, many incidents like this they've been to. So we have got the answers. We can answer your questions. 
why don't you contact us here and let us help you to prepare?